Good morning and welcome to worship. My name is Pastor Tim Wells, pastor of Cross of Christ Lutheran Church in Aurora, Nebraska, and it's a pleasure to have you join us for worship this morning. Today is Life Sunday. Today we are reminded that all life is precious in the sight of God. And we especially remember the lives of the unborn. We remember the lives of children in the womb. Let's begin our service. We begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Trusting in these words, we now take a moment of silence to reflect on our sins. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his only Son, Jesus, to die for you, and for his sake God forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll now read our intro for today, and today's intro will come from select verses from Psalm 40. We'll read responsively, and your words are found in bold on the screen. I have not hidden your deliverance within my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He drew me up from the pit of destruction out of the miry bog and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust, who does not turn to the proud, to those who go astray after a lie. You have multiplied, O Lord my God, your wondrous deeds and your thoughts toward us. None can compare with you. I will proclaim and tell of them, yet they are more than can be told. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I have not hidden your deliverance within my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who governs all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the prayers of your people and grant us your peace through all our days. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading comes from the book of 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. The young man Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no frequent vision. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his own place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel, and he said, Here I am ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. 
But Eli said, I did not call. Lie down again. So Samuel went and lay down, and the Lord called again, Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But Eli said, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time, and he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the young man. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood, calling as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant hears. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading comes from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 12 through 20. The Apostle Paul writes, All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be enslaved by anything. Food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for food. And God will destroy both one and the other. The body is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For as it is written, the two will become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the sexually immoral person sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter, beginning with the 43rd verse. Glory to you, O Lord. The next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered him, Before Philip called you when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. Jesus answered him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And Jesus said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please pray with me. Lord God, may the words of my mouth May the meditations, may the thoughts of all of our hearts, all of our minds, be pleasing in your sight. Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I'm going to do something a little fun today. I brought a tennis racket and a tennis ball. And no, these are not mine. They're pink. They belong to my girls. But I uh, brought these with me. I thought, let's see how many times I can hit this tennis ball with my racket without dropping it. Let's see how we do. Let's see. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 21, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 31, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 41, 2, 3, 4, 7, 8, 9, 51, 2, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 61, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 71, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 81, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 91, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 9, 101, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 21, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 31, 2, ah, 132. Not bad, but I have made it to 200 in the past. I gotta find my ball, I'll roll away. I'll be right back, we gotta try this again. Hold on, find the ball, try this again. I'm coming, I'm coming back to the camera here. All right, here we go, let's try this again. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. 1920. Oh, that time I just got to 20. But you know what? I'll stop. I'm going to put the racket away. And you're probably wondering why on earth did Pastor play around with the tennis ball at the beginning of the sermon? Why did I just spend my time doing that? Was it illegal for me to play with the tennis ball in a sermon? Of course not, right? I didn't break any laws, I didn't hurt anyone, and if I wanted to spend the whole time of the sermon just playing around with the tennis ball, I suppose I could do that. But would that be beneficial? Would that be the best use of my time? And the answer to that question, probably not. Each Sunday morning from 9 to 10 a.m., that hour does not belong to me. That hour is not mine to do with as I see fit, as I choose. Every Sunday morning, that hour from 9 to 10 a.m. belongs to God. It belongs to you. Every Sunday morning from 9 to 10 a.m., I am called to use that time to help you grow in God's word, not to play around with the tennis ball. Now, playing with the tennis ball, not illegal, not necessarily wrong, but it wouldn't be beneficial. Wouldn't be helpful for you. During this hour, I need to be reminded, this hour is not my own to do with as I see fit. This hour belongs to God. This hour belongs to you, and I need to use this hour to help you grow in your faith. In today's reading from the book of 1 Corinthians, the Apostle Paul says, All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. Not all things are beneficial. Paul knows that he can eat whatever it is that he wants to eat. Food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for food. Paul can eat whatever he wants, but he also knows that he cannot become enslaved to that freedom. He cannot spend his entire life just eating whatever he wants to eat. Food and the stomach, they are not going to last forever. He cannot make eating his entire purpose in life. All things are lawful for me, not all things are beneficial. Paul then talks about something else that we might do with our bodies. Paul talks about sex. And he says, yes, the way God created your body, you are able to have sex. But you cannot allow your body to become enslaved to sexual immorality. And why? Because just as this hour does not belong to me, your body does not belong to you. Paul says you are not your own. You have been bought with a price. 
So glorify God in your body. Now what does that mean? It means that much of what the world has taught us about personal freedoms is a lie. And why is that a lie? Because you are not your own. Your body, your life is not yours to do with as you see fit, as you choose. You have been bought with a price. You belong to God, so glorify God in your body. And as I already said, that flies in the face of much of what our sinful world has taught us. Our world teaches us that we can do whatever we want. Whatever makes us feel good. Whatever makes us happy. And no one has the right to infringe on that. If someone wants to try to limit my freedoms, I have the right to fight back. And in this world, we are so quick to fight back. We fight back against the media, against the government, against one another, all in the name of freedom. Because it's my body, it's my life, and I have the right to do with it as I see fit. And no one can tell me otherwise. Not even God. So if I want to look at porn, I have that right. If I want to go to a strip club or pay for a prostitute, I have that right. If I want to live with, and I think you know what I mean by live with, my boyfriend or girlfriend before marriage, I have that right. If I want to cheat on my spouse and look for greener grass, I have that right. If I get pregnant, or if I get someone pregnant, and we're not ready for a child, and we decide to have an abortion, I have that right. Paul says, all things are lawful for me. Our sinful world would permit me to do all kinds of things. But not all things are helpful. Not all things are beneficial. Not all things are good. Paul says, The body is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. Do you not know that you have been made members of Christ? If you have been united with Christ, then you have become one spirit with him. Flee from sexual immorality. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit in you? And then the part we've already heard, you are not your own. You have been bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. Now I've skipped a few sentences from the reading there. Those are the highlights. Again, your life, your body is not your own to do with as you see fit. You belong to God. You are a part of the body of Christ. You are a temple of the Holy Spirit. So glorify God in your body. Today is Life Sunday. Today we are reminded that all life is precious to God. That includes the poor, the hungry, those in prison, those in the hospital. It includes people of every skin color and culture and language. It even includes both Republicans and Democrats. Today we are reminded that all life is precious to God, and today specifically, we remember the life of those in the womb. The unborn, they too are precious in God's sight. And as we are reminded that we are not our own, that we have been bought with a price, that we are precious to God and belong to Him, we are also reminded that the poor and the hungry and those in prison, and those in the hospital, and people of every skin color, and culture, and language, and political party, and the unborn are precious to God and have been bought with a price. 
Not only am I called to care for my body and use it in ways that honor and glorify God, I am also called to care for the bodies of my neighbor, the bodies and lives of others, in ways that honor and glorify God. I cannot ignore the needs of my neighbor just so that my own desires get met. I cannot make it all about me. All things are lawful. All things are possible, but not all things are beneficial. Not all things are helpful for my neighbor. Today again, Life Sunday, and we remember the unborn. For almost 50 years now, our nation has made it legal and permissible to get an abortion. But that does not make it right. Your body is not your own. The body of the child in your womb, not your own. Glorify God with your body. You have been bought with a price. You are precious to God, valuable to God, so valuable to God that he was willing to pay the ultimate price to make you his own shedding his own blood, giving you his life on the cross so that you would be his forever. God loves you so much that he paid the ultimate price dying for you on the cross. You are valuable to God. Your neighbors, all of your neighbors are valuable to God. The child in the womb is valuable to God. So honor what is valuable. Amen. I now invite you to join me as together we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, in the life everlasting. Amen. We now turn to the Lord in prayer. O Lord, you have called us into the fellowship and priesthood of your Son, Jesus Christ. By his incarnation and great work of salvation, heaven is open to us in him. Give us boldness to cling to your faithful call that your deliverance would not be hidden but spoken freely in all the world. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Gracious God, preserve your church here and throughout the world. Send forth laborers into your harvest and sustain those you have sent. Make all Christians bold in confession and unwavering in prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you are the Lord and you do whatever seems good to you. As every lawful authority on earth comes from you, uphold in righteousness and health our nation with its leaders. Send peace in our time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, behold in mercy all for whom we pray. Hear us, Lord, as we lift up to you those names we carry in our hearts. Bring healing, comfort, strength, patience, and certainty to all in need. Receive our thanks for your constant watch and merciful kindness. In every sorrow and every joy, do not let our eyes be drawn from the greater marvel of your kindness in Christ Jesus, by whose grace and forgiveness alone we receive every blessing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Amen. 
Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now we receive the blessing of our God. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift up his face, shine on you, and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. That concludes our service for today. A couple of reminders. Uh, first of all, we do have our Bible reading program going. If you'd like to join us with that, we have some bookmarks. They're a trifold. They have readings right now for each day for the month of January, February, and March. And you can use that uh, reading plan uh, in your personal devotions for the year. If you use that plan this year, you'll have gone through the major events and portions of Scripture uh, in order in a year. That's the plan. Other thing I want to remind us of, we are about a month away from the season of Lent already. So mark your calendars February 17th. That's Ash Wednesday. We'll have a service at 7 p.m. and encourage you to join us for that. We'll also be posting services online. And then during the Wednesdays in Lent, all the way up to Holy Week, again, we'll have services each Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. And our series theme this year is Places of the Passion. So we're going to be talking a bit about specific parts of the geography of Jerusalem and the surrounding area and how that pertains to the story of salvation. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.